All right, I'm going to talk about Google Gemini. So what was Google Bard is now called Google Gemini. It's its latest large language model or generative AI platform or LLM. Just came out last week or the latest version came out last week. It was announced, I think, in December with a fake video, which did all these things, which was all fake and stitched together. Turns out it wasn't even stitched together. It can't do half the things that they stitched together. But that being said, it's really good. Um, I've been messing around with it and I've seen lots of reviews on it. People are saying it's as good as ChatGPT. Some people say it's a bit better. Some people say it's almost as good, but it's thereabouts, which is really good and really impressive that Google, at least for now, have caught up. I expect ChatGPT about to jump ahead again, but the fact they've caught up, it's the first time somebody's caught up with OpenAI, if that's the case. I usually do simple prompts I do travel stuff, which is not that complicated. Some people have tested these a bit more rigorously. So I'm going to type in the typical um, typical sort of travel planning itinerary prompt, which I've often used to test these things. So this is for a trip to Riga, and it's the typical sort of two-day itinerary. I've told it coffee in the morning. There's a nice coffee shop, nice photo, which is nice. Two coffee shops. I did tell it coffee all morning. Um, downtown Riga, places to walk in the afternoon. I did say I want another coffee in the afternoon. I did want Latvian cuisine. Looks very nice. Links to TripAdvisor there. Quite a few links to TripAdvisor. I did ask for a bar. And I asked for a... Um, I didn't ask for a cozy place for cocktails. I wanted a nightclub. There's my nightclub. And another nightclub. Excellent. And the kebab time. It didn't find me a kebab, but it's put it in the itinerary. So... That's pretty good. I've tried these a few times. I've tried San Francisco, which I know really well. And it's as good as ChatGPT for creating these itineraries. Just as importantly, it, it can create now and put these on a map, which I'll go to in a second. But my next thing now I'm going to show you is these apps. So when you do at on your ChatGPT, you can add a GPT if you have the Plus account. So a GPT is an app that somebody else has built on top of ChatGPT, enables you to access information or a, a function which does a, a sort of a, um, an action or access an API, that kind of thing. So it's like searching an app somebody else has built. Google doesn't have that yet at least, but it's got these that it's built itself. So now I can go at hotels, which is Google travel hotels. And I can go, I want to, it knows I'm talking about Riga, hopefully. And I'm gonna do a four star, 4.3 min score. So now it's talking to Google Hotels. You'll see that pop up, hopefully here, if it doesn't fail. There you go. And it's now finding hotels. Hopefully they're all four stars and 4.3 or more. And it looks pretty good. So it's now used its own API. It's got access to all of those. And it's found me these hotels. There's some nice pictures, everything that met my conditions. If I click on these, it will just go to Google Hotels. I can then book through OTA on top because they've paid the money or the hotel down below if they're participating in the program. So booking process doesn't really change, but I can now do all my search and filtering and everything within Gemini. What I can do here that I can't do on hotels is things like deep searches. So I can now search these. I want to stay in a place with a rooftop bar that's on a street within half a mile of the ho of the river, that sort of thing, which is really interesting. And it's on the same place that I built my itinerary, right? So now obviously I need a flight. So I just go at flights and I go SFO to Riga and I want to go via London and I want to go Mar uh, March 2nd to the 16th. So now same thing, if it works, sometimes it doesn't. It'll go to Google Flights and it'll come back with a list of flights and it'll give me a list of links off to those airlines through Google Flights to book. So there's a Virgin flight to London. It's given me a link there to Google Travel, which is great. There's my Ryanair's from London to Riga. And there's my list right there. $427 to London. That's pretty good through Paris. That's good. And then my flights from Ryanair. So these will link off that. I guess Google does have Ryanair, so that goes to Google Travel and that goes to Ryanair.
So that's now all on one platform. Now you'd normally think that's great. Next thing you want to do is save this. So you'd think, go to uh, Google Docs and save in a doc. It's got these Google Docs. I haven't got anything to work on Google Docs yet. So it can't open a doc. It can't save a doc. It can't search docs. It can't do anything. Look, it tell me how to copy and paste to a doc. That's genius. Now, it wasn't doing anything on the email either, but I did just get it to search emails. So whatever's not built in here, I assume will be. I just think maybe if it's not available, just don't put it on the list yet. If you can't do anything with docs, add it later. The other big problem with Gemini is sometimes it just refuses to do stuff completely. It's a bit like um, Sharpay from High School Musical. It's just difficult. Sometimes it'll create an image and then you'll go back a second later and you'll say, it'll say, doesn't know how to create an image. Um, for, let's do my Riga trip. Um, most images I found are not very good, although sometimes it does come up with a really, really good one. It really struggles if you're trying to add people. It doesn't like to add people. It gets, it, it's very sensitive, Gemini. But again, often it's just not compliant. That looks decent. Then it's not as good as Mid Journey or Bing, I don't think, but it's getting there. It creates some images pretty quickly. So here's, I just want to jump back into Maps because Maps is an interesting one. So I'm going to go to at Maps. So now I'm going to do a search for find a Chipotle near me, open until 9 p.m. with a Barnes and Noble after, and how far between them. So it's now searching Google Maps, which is Google Places, which is Google My Business, Google Business Profiles. It's got all that data, as everyone knows, within Google, and it has direct access to that, which you can build as well uh, using ChatGPT, but it, you kind of bounce them between them. Google's got this built in directly, so it can do these complex searches. So that is my nearest Chipotle, and that is my nearest Barnes & Noble. And it's telling me how far, it's only got my IP, but actually there's about like six minutes away. And it's seven minutes to Barnes and Noble and it's got directions between that. You can't do that in Google Maps right now. You can by putting a start point and a finish point, I get that, but asking for a place that's open and directions and all these things, there's another version of that to a different Barnes and Noble. And again, different one. I don't know how many times it's gonna create that, but that's pretty, that's pretty good. Different Chipotle, same Barnes and Noble. So this is interesting, and this is these are all now the locations of the Chipotles and Barnes and Nobles in the whole area. Bit over and a bit over and above there, but I appreciate it. So this is now interesting because you've got maps, hotels, flights, LLM, everything within one platform, and that's everything that OTAs and others have been building as far as trip planning. So I think this today is the best trip planner available. I can't share a map, by the way. I don't know what to do with these maps. I can hover over them. I, I don't know how to share it. Um, I'm sure that's coming. The bits that aren't quite working, I think you assume that they'll they'll fix those things and they will work at some point. But this is really good. The interesting thing I think about this trip planning is they that Google has all the pieces. They've also got the things to do aspect, which I don't know, but I assume is coming next. So all the attractions, the tours, the activities, they have access to that at Google. Uh, we we partner with them, so we feed a lot of that stuff. And they could easily display that on here. They have the place IDs or the the um, the POIs. They have all the information they need to add that to here, and it would go through the same book and flow. So the interesting part of all of that is that Google can monetize this today. So whereas LLMs are a bit of a risk because they can't monetize these searches for most things, within travel, they could. I don't know if that's as much money. I don't know if they're going to get there for billion dollars from booking by going through this, by going through Google Travel. I don't know that, but I know they can monetize this this path right now. So it might be an interesting place for Google to go. They've got problems with the rest of their search because they need that those advertising dollars, which aren't as productized as these travel pieces, but it's an interesting area to look at. So I think Gemini today is right up there. I've tried it for more complex things like creating strategies. I love to create marketing strategies with this thing, get really creative. It's as good as ChatGPT. So it's 
right up there. And it's great to have two large language models that are competing now because chat GPT have been on their own for so long. Well, a year and two months on their own at the top. Um, second thing today is chat GPT and they released this memory. So I did a video, I think it was last week where I created a GPT. I created basically a GPT, which stores my personas for my travel. And it can store a, a personal persona, a persona with my family. And I use that to search travel products and just sort of shown how that can work. But now ChatGPT, as of today, have built that in kind of. So now they're building your profile. As you search for stuff, they're building a profile of the sort of, sort of things that you like, um, things that your family like, things that you, you um, enjoyed or didn't enjoy. So that's building your persona. That's obviously really scary for a lot of people, probably for everyone. So you can definitely turn that off. They've made a big deal of that. Or you can just delete parts of it, which is probably quite useful. Um, so I don't know if they're going to have multiple personas, but maybe you'd store a work persona. So all the work you do during the day and it learns your, if you're doing marketing, you're doing this kind of social post and this kind of thing, and it'll learn the stuff that you like and your preferences. And then you can use that to create the next prompt. That's full personalization on the on your side on you as an agent side of course i want to talk about agents the agent to agent piece uh, the other side of the agent is the gpt that's an agent which somebody else created right that's the gpt the application which somebody else has connected to their api to their shop to their information to their tool to whatever so now you've got my agent information and you've got their agent information and my agent can talk to their agent this is front to back agent this bypasses google now you could do a search on chat gpt which you can today using my agent with somebody else's gpt you get direct access to the information and the information source that you want that's pretty disruptive i think for google i think that's where chat gp that's where open ai go with this stuff but it's it's a bit of a google killer if those two things connect and people get into this space so I think it's great. You've got Google creating the tools over here within the Google infrastructure and that'll be within your Gmail and Google Docs and it's great LLM and that's really sticky, but they don't have any GPTs and OpenAI does and they're probably going to jump ahead again with the LLM, which will probably be better than Gemini again. So these two are going to keep racing at the top. I don't know where Facebook sits on this. Theirs is open source, meant to be pretty good, but it really sits on Messenger no one ever uses. And then you've got things like Anthropic and Perplexity are sitting behind it. But these two are the leaders for now. For stuff like images, I would still use Bing, which is OpenAI, or MidJourney. But for a lot of stuff, for image recognition, ChatGPT and Gemini are really good. But for travel, I think Gemini is probably the most interesting thing I've seen. I think a lot of travel companies are also in trouble, and they've been building stuff for a year, and now Gemini is just better than that out of the box, which everyone knows can happen and that's just life building in ai that's it for now um more to come and um, see you soon